Hello everyone, welcome, how are you doing? My name is Keith Richer, <clears throat> I am your professor, and this is week two. We are going to be looking at unit one, agreeing and disagreeing, talking about vacations, activities, plans, things we have experienced, that kind of stuff. So hopefully <clears throat> um, you're feeling comfortable, you're getting used to the online class. I know that it is still a little bit difficult and maybe a little bit boring, so please uh, just try your best to focus, pay attention. I will do my best to continually trying to improve this class and make it a little bit more interesting and fun, and I hope that you've learned something. So uh, here in week two, we are going to get started. All right, so the first thing I want you to focus on before anything else, this is just kind of general education about using English, is when you're talking is focusing on your verbs. Your verbs, especially in conversation, we use a lot of past tense or guaga. So this is just kind of a tip or a hint that I want to give you to really focus on your verbs when you're speaking, especially in the past tense. Um, this is a common mistake, so if you can solve this issue, your English will improve very easily. So please focus on that in conversation, especially when you're having general conversations. You're talking about things you did. For example, how was your weekend? What did you do? Right? That's was and did. Guaga, guaga. <clears throat> and answers also the same. When you are telling a story, usually it's going to be in the past tense. Right, so I went to the park with my girlfriend. We rode bicycles. Guaga. It was fun. Guaga. We ate pizza. Guaga. Drank beer and watched movies. The reason this is important is because it is different than Korean, where Korean, the final verb is changed to the past tense. But in English, every verb is changed to the past tense. So please just notice that when you're speaking, if you can focus and change that verb, your English will be improved. Before we get started, let's talk about the weekly homework. You will have a discussion workbook homework, unit one. You should answer five questions with three lines or three sentences minimum each question. So that's going to be our writing homework. This week, I will choose those questions, and I will give you those questions in the U-Class format, which you will answer. Video recording. You will also do another video recording. So part one is answer a question from the discussion workbook, and then ask a new question, similar to what we did with the introduction video. And then the final part will be a attendance quiz. This is for comprehension to make sure that you're understanding and you're watching the videos and you're listening to the material. Since we can't be in class, I want to make sure that you are participating and that you are watching the videos. So we will have a short quiz that will come, uh, information will come from the videos each week. And you will need to answer those videos and get a score of 50% or more in order to get your attendance score. So please finish the quiz after watching all the videos. This will help us regulate attendance online and you must get a score of 50% or above to get that one attendance point. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our book that we're going to be using. Smart choice number two should be this red one. Hopefully that you have purchased it and you are ready to use the book in class. So let's go ahead and get started. Take a look at this. Um, here you can see the units that we're going to start covering. We'll go through most of these. We will skip a few of them. And here's some useful class language. You can use this stuff in class. Um, or you can use this stuff in conversation. Not really that important at the moment, but what I do want to cover before we get started in our Unit 1 is some useful language that I think will be useful in our class um, when we meet in person or via video, something like that. And just general conversation, these are very, very useful. For example, 
how do you say momo in English, right? How do you say, uh, right? How do you say that in English? Or how do you say pop in English, right? So how do you say that in English? What do you call thing thing in English, right? What do you call a dalgi in English, right? Strawberry. How do you spell momo? How do you spell teacher's name? Anybody know? K-E-I-T-H. And how do you say this word? If you see a word and you don't understand it, right? What is that word? Huh? Moya? Sizzle? Sizzle? How do you say this word? Sizzle. Sizzle. What does sizzle mean? What does sizzle mean? Anybody know what sizzle means? Think about when you're cooking some sem gipsaw, some doji gogi. It's that beautiful sound. Sizzle. Sizzle of meat cooking. Hawamashiketta. So, excuse me, can you repeat that, please, right? You're asking, oh, hambando, right? One more time. Can you say that again? I don't understand. Can you explain it again? Right, so asking again. And very, very useful, very common. Uh, I'm sorry, can you speak more slowly, please, right? Uh, please speak more slowly. I am not an English speaker. So, very, very useful language you can use in your conversations. There's sizzle again. Looking good, looking good. So today we are going to be talking about um, some vacations, agreeing and disagreeing, activities and plans, those kinds of things. So we have uh, so some pictures here that we're going to go over. Basically, we're just going to take these these words, these vocabulary words, and match them to the picture. I think it's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do it together, right? One is obviously rock climbing. That is climbing. Number two, what do you think two is? That is hiking, right? So that's going to be hiking. Number two, now these are different. One is with your feet and one is with your hands, right? So rock climbing and hiking. Number three, what is this one? This one is going to be kayaking yep that is kayaking and number four very very common activity that we do during vacation uh, you know you go yogi chogi ro you go around a new city and you look at the new things in the city that you have never seen before that is called sightseeing for example if a foreigner comes to seoul where will they go right where would you tell them to go maybe you tell them to go to namsan tower or you tell them to go to Gyeongbokgung Palace, or you tell them to go to uh, Itaewon, these kind of famous areas that you go to, that is called sightseeing. And number five here, we have this person. This person is camping, um, not very successfully, but they are camping. Number six we have is fishing, right? Number seven, what is that? That is scuba diving under the water. And number eight, anybody know what this is? Number eight, right? That's going to be sailing, different kinds of sailing. And number nine we have is horseback riding, horseback riding. Right, so commonly, if we had class together, we could ask people things that they did, right? Things that they did um, during their recent vacation. But we cannot, so let's take a look at some more examples together. Right, here's some extra vocabulary that we can use when we're talking about vacation, some common activities. Shopping, swimming, snorkeling, tanning, parachuting, bungee jumping, parasailing, visiting museums, visiting historic sites. What's a historic site? Right, think about uh, Gyeongju. Right? Gyeongju is a historic site. And common actions we take on vacation, relaxing, relaxing by the pool, eating, drinking, hanging out. Very, very important one. I want you to remember this if you can. In English, we don't say play. Play is for children. We say hang out, hang out with our friends. Nolda. Dancing, clubbing, going to clubs, partying, walking on the beach. All right. So this one here, maybe you're going to a club on Heyunde Beach or something like that during the summertime. We can say clubbing. Let's take a look at some more examples. Right, what is this? This is snorkeling. Correct, that is snorkeling. The next one is tanning, getting some sun. 
What is this? Anybody know? Skydiving or parachuting? Parachuting or skydiving. And that one, has anybody done that? That is bungee jumping. Bungee jumping. And this one here, anybody know what this is? Parasailing. That is called parasailing. And then here we have two people. They're drinking, taking a selfie, or relaxing by the pool. Here we can see what are they doing. Maybe this is Thursday party, or go clubbing. So that's how we use talking about experiences. Now the common question is, have you ever been rock climbing? Right. So have you ever dung dang? Have you ever been, and then you fill in the blank here with the activity that you want. So have you ever been clubbing? Have you ever been parasailing? Have you ever been parachuting? Those kinds of things. That's how we use this sentence structure. And the answers, yes, I have been. Or no, I haven't been, right? So this one is going to be positive. Yes, I have. Or no, I haven't. That is how we answer that um, in that situation. So for right now, I think um, we're going to go ahead and go to the conversation page on page five. We're going to listen to that conversation. And we will start that in the next video. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this video. Please continue to the next video. Thank you very much.